Hello, I am Lux with no smart quibs this time. And I remember. And this is our thoughts on... Wait for it? Voltron! Legendary Defender. Season 5. Episodes 1 through 3. Wow. All I have to say it right off the bat is... Wow, that episode 2. Yeah, we're barely into the season here. And so... You really have to wonder, okay, if the seasons were broken up in normal, average season length, where would this have fallen? Because this is not what you would expect for episode two. I know, and it looks like they dumped the entire budget for the season right into that episode. There were fights going on all over the place, and things were blowing up, they were using style to illustrate things, and then they used high action and high panning, and wow, there was even touches when Lotor is walking towards um, the ship where his father is. There's this one shot where they're like really close to the ground and following his feet, and it's just so well animated. You're like, it's just his feet. Yes, it's really interesting because you're seeing Lotor walking over, and you're seeing the hologram walk towards, and just that moment when they pass. I knew something was going to happen there. I was like, either Lotor's going to kill him, kidnap him, threaten his life, or something I'm not expecting. Well, I got the something I'm not expecting. Because when they passed, I was like, okay, Lotor recognized that something's wrong. So whatever is wrong with Sam is something that is immediately visually obvious to an alien race, just by being close. Okay, I have a couple of theories here. One, he's fake, and two, he's fake and deadly. Like, once the father got over there, he was gonna explode or something, or you know, something along those lines. Or he'd be totally brainwashed and would attack them. Yeah, something that way. Just the moment I saw a little Torgo, hmm, I'm like, uh oh. I was like, this is not going to end well. I also like how they were subtly reiterating multiple times that we're going with the um, backstabbing route because that's who he is. Because they said that multiple times. And just the fight between Zarkon and Lotor, I mean, Lotor is good, but Zarkon's hopped up on quintessence. Hopped up more like Bane levels of injection of toxic chemical into your body to make you all buff, kind of. Yeesh. And such more interesting backstory, too, with Hagar. I don't know what she's doing to get these memory flashes, because for a long time she didn't remember that Zarkon was her husband, but apparently now she remembers that Lotor is her son, and it was a uh, complicated birth. Yeah, because basically we got the whole, the boy may not live kind of scene, and then we see that he lived, Grew up to be a teenager, or a tween, I should say, then teenager, then glowing eyes, and then we get the whole activate this thing once she finds out that, oh, those two are near each other. So apparently we need those two to stay separated. Uh, considering one killed the other, yeah, probably need to keep them separated. I'm almost wondering that when Hagar asked to activate that thing, she was actually already activating the whole round the people up, there's a power vacuum. Entirely possible, because we don't know what it was that she activated, just that it was a code word, and she was instantly obeyed. Also, when those guys showed up to assassinate her in the third episode, I was like, yeah, no, you, you guys, you, you won't stand a chance. I was like, oh, assassins, how cute. I see you read the abridged book of ninja fighting. <laughs> also, the first episode was good, too. It's just the second one is the one that really caught us off guard with how Beautiful and well done it was. So, back to first episode, because all the pathos and in Pidge being so emotional, because we saw how Pidge was trying to find Matt. Then you put the two of them together trying to find their father. And I'm still iffy on Matt. <laughs> I know, me too. Though I also say I'm very iffy on uh, Shiro. Oh, there is no if. There's only like three people you can really trust in this series right now. Pidge, Hunk, and Lance. I'm pretty sure there's something off about the princess, too. 
Well, just looking at her alternate self, Empress Alora, through the dimensional rift, hmm. just the fact that that potential exists. Also, Sven. Sven was fun in those episodes. That was awesome. That was a wonderful callback to the 80s American stitched together Voltron. Just going off to the healing planet. <laughs> Blowtor. Just, those words sound so sincere, but they are so false. It's like, I can't believe you. Even though what you're saying is true, I can't believe you. Also, nice touch on the Golra Altaian alliance because Lotor in the 80s Voltron was obsessed with getting Allura. Oh, yeah. And I like Lance's reaction immediately when we should like hook up or something for the peace of the two groups and everything. And Lance is basically misinterpreting that as you want to do what now? Back away, Allura. Yeah, I think it said, like, Spinal and Lance, stand by my side for the Empire or something like that. And Lance was like, nope, nope, you no touchy. <laughs> oh, also the whole thing with Shiro and Lance and in that alternate dimension. Oh, yeah, because uh, we're, we're both seeing support for our theories, but in different ways. Lux is still fairly firmly behind the clone theory. And to that, I'm adding that the Shiro we have is corrupted because we saw, especially with who Lotor's generals brought back. Ooh, I thought we'd see him again. Brings a nice flashback to when they were holding a Galra prisoner in the Castle of Lions and hooked him up to the memory thing and he was corrupting the castle's data. Remember, Shiro has a synthetic arm that's Galra tech. He would be subject to such corruption because remember he was having mental issues during that episode. So I think that whether it's the original Shiro or a clone has been corrupted and what was trying to reach out to Lance is the true core of Shiro, the true personality, the true spirit. Because Shiro says that he doesn't remember that, that he kind of blacked out right there. Which means that the controlling personality that we don't trust wasn't in control at that point. And something else was reaching out going, Lance, you have to listen to me. It's also interesting that it's Lance that Shiro reached out to. Out of all the possible paladins. Because Shiro and Keith were normally pretty close. But Keith has that whole half Gora thing going on. Also, he wasn't there in the stream because he's no longer a pilot of Voltron. I also always had a feeling that Shiro would be corrupted in some way by that arm. Because we don't know what else happened to him while he was a prisoner. We know that he was experimented on. And we know that he got a robotic arm. And they spent all that time fighting in the pits. Mm -hmm. And then the second time we're not quite sure what's going on because he saw himself. So that's the whole clone theory for me. It's like he saw himself. So unless he's having an out-of-body experience, how were there two? Or it's just some weird thing left over from the mind-altering sessions. And going back to, oh, we thought they used up the whole budget on episode two. Lance's training session in episode three. Just, that was pretty. There's a lot of little pretty in this show so far. Episode two was a whole lot of pretty, but there's like... Little touches everywhere. It's getting to the point where the transformation sequence is starting to look a little normal. By comparison. Because it's the same transformation sequence from the beginning. Because at this rate, they're going to have to upgrade the intro not to keep up with the story, but to keep up with the animation quality. Mm hmm Because they just keep not notching it up. And I hear it gets better from here. And I'm thinking, it gets better? I'm not sure I can handle it. I'm not sure our TV's good enough to see that. I also hear the story gets better. And I'm so like, it does? I'm like, but we're bringing so many elements back because we're getting returns of characters because, you know, the scavengers slash hustlers that pulled that shakedown on Lance and then switched alliances back, you know, when we're part of the team. So we had them again. We went back to Alcaria, you know, where Pidge had his whole bonding with Pidge had her whole bonding with nature thing and got that weird lion upgrade. 
You mean, I can shoot plants at people? That can come in handy. Well, it did work pretty well on some of the Galra ships. Also, big, giant thingy that apparently was... It looked like a native creature? I'm trying to remember exactly what the lady said. Oh, no, it looked like one of their tanks. How they would interface with the forest and get the mechs. Ah. So it was like a giant version of one of their mechs. Oh, okay. That's what I misinterpreted. It's actually been a little bit since I've watched the last season. Well, I think that was more than a season ago. Ah. And my memory's not the best in the world. What was I just saying? And going back to the first episode, how could the lions be trapped just because the lava's below them? Hunk just tapping one of those walls broke it and let lava in. You're going to tell me that none of the lions could cut through a wall? We had to form Voltron in that narrow space? Yeah, that's another thing. How do they form Voltron in that narrow space? Is it just animation physics? Because there was a whole lot of flying going on in that transformation sequence. It wasn't just, let's just kind of squish them together and I'll form the head. No, it was actually the full-on transformation sequence. Also, since we're now getting a little bit into nitpick territory, how does anyone in the Galra Empire know that the Earthling prisoner is that important to the Paladins? My only guess is, is Lotor did a lot of good research and that's how his generals knew about it, or it's information Shiro had. Or maybe if it's even another idea just popped my head, maybe it's information they integrated out of Matt and the father when they were still in custody way back when. If you look at that capture sequence, they considered the Earthlings to be so primitive. So how did the father even get ranked as a high-level scientist to be on this special prison planet? Well, maybe he showed himself to be worthy by figuring out something. Probably. Also, my first thought when the sentries were active there, but like all the droids were down, I was just like, Hmm, did the scientists free themselves and they're just staying here so they can work on science stuff? That's an idea. But my first idea was like, this is the general's uh, blow tour. Which was reiterated when the guy said, are you with the scary lady? <laughs> Which one is he talking about? Because there were three scary ladies. The yeah. big one who wants to punch things? The pilot and the bubbly crazy one. You always have to watch out for the bubbly crazy ones. Oh yeah. Because one moment they will be happy, another moment they will be killing you. And then bringing you back. And then killing you again. And then laughing about it. As they bring you back a third time. And go, remember when I tried to kill you and we both laughed? Ah, good times. Good times. <laughs> also, I love her answer when Hagar opens their cell. Like, are you here to kill us? And she's like, no, I'm here to recruit you. I really like where this is going. Like, so right after this recording, we're watching another three episodes, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but actually, we're, we're probably going to do something else entirely different. Like, read some children's books. <laughs> so anything else we want to go over? Because we just jumped around so much, but it's so much fun. Well, going back to animation, I really liked this bit in the first episode where Pidge took the shuttle onto the lion. Ah. Just the timing and the animation and the motion. Ah, and that reminds me of a of more nitpicks I had for that particular episode. Oh my god, the physics they broke. Ouch. For instance, Matt would have probably died from the rescue. And everyone else in that shuttle would have probably died from the rescue. <laughs> Just based on physics itself. And I would love someone to do the math on what Pidge and Matt say about the 9G thing. Because, can anyone actually survive that? Let me know. <laughs> hey, Matt Pat, if you, you ever find this video, we, we'd love for you to do a video on it. Yeah, yeah Voltron. Just pick anything from Voltron. I, I'm pretty sure lore, physics, have fun. Uh, I know you just got finished with how old Ash Ketchum actually is, but and you have a kid now. But hey, Voltron. But yeah, I completely forgot about that because it's like, the physics of that was just so bugging me. It's like, they're they're dead, right? Because physics says they'd be dead. And of course, it's the Earthlings jetpack that fails. I was like, okay. Activate your jetpacks. Matt's is going to fail, isn't it? Yep, there it is. 
All right, and who's gonna rescue? Oh, the robot, that's cute. I love how the robot's all shiny. I can see myself in your breastplate. Also, I've not, I noticed some like technical things. There was one point where a Pidge says, I can't move, I'm already wrapped. And then we see the animation of Pidge's lion being wrapped. Like well after Pidge says, I can't move. The timing was a little off there. But for everything they put out in these episodes so far, I can forgive them for that. My only other thing there is, okay, so Voltron's completely encased and can't move. You tell me you guys don't have anything explosive to use? Also, the lions can't move. The pilots are inside the lions. The pilots themselves should still be able to physically move. So couldn't they move somewhere within the lion and possibly, you know, get to some sort of access hatch and work on cutting vines or something? Also, I'd just like to reiterate explosives. I'm sure there were some. <laughs> if nothing else, the Bayards. Bayards cut. Bayards are energy weapons. They do all sorts of stuff. Like transform into swords. That was another awesome moment. Lance, Allura, and the sword. Trip. That was cute. So much shipping material. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Bayards, I like how good Lotor was, it was kind of scary, at using the Black Bayard. That was really scary. It's like, when did he get experience with that type of weapon? Because it seems to be specifically a paladin weapon. So it was like, okay, did he like figure this out from when his team made their own ships from the meteor material? Because I bet the Bayards are made from the same material as the Lions. Actually, theoretically, Lotor, if Lotor and Zarkon were getting along when Lotor was younger, because Zarkon originally had the Black Bayard. Mm. So Lotor could have actually gotten his hands on it and practiced with it. Very possible. Oh, awesome thoughts. Anything else? Or should we do our final thoughts on these episodes? Uh, we've probably said enough. Other than, it's cool, it's cool, it's awesome, go watch it. Oh, we forgot at the beginning, spoiler alert, just in case you hadn't watched season five yet. So any final thoughts? No, I think I said everything. It, as soon as we turn the recording off, I'll probably come up with something else. Okay. Well, my final thoughts are, these are good episodes. As I said before, go watch them. Netflix. Awesome. So... Outro. Um, actually, one little detail there. If you don't have Netflix and don't want to get Netflix, at least seasons one and two are actually available on DVD and Blu-ray. Watch them. They are good. And after you watch them, come back and watch us. Because we did episodes on that. Go have fun. And this has been our thoughts on Voltron, Legendary Defender, Season 5, Episodes 1 through 3. Oh, hey, outro. Yes, we record this, air quotes, live, every time. No, it's not scripted. Y you watch the video. Y you think we script anything? <laughs> Except for that one time. Once. Out of how many videos? Once. So, yeah. Like button, subscribe button, place to comment, other videos. And then once you feel like leaving YouTube, links to more art and to donations and commissions and uh, there might be some purchasing links because you know amazon that's a place to shop thank you so much for watching and listening we appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views likes comments dialogue suggestions and of course financially as well but all of it is truly appreciated Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.